Hey, welcome back to the Glycogen Cycling Channel. Today is stage eight of Intelligentsia Cup, which brought us to Elmhurst, Illinois. As always, we're going to start with a full lap so you guys can see, you know, the general course and, you know, how it looks like. But really fun course around Elmhurst College. This was on Friday, so there is a decent amount of parties going on, a bunch of people there. You can see on the right-hand side, there's, you know, some tents that people set up to hang out in. And on the back stretch, some, someone actually uh, rented a bounce house for, you know, kids to play in. So overall, beautiful day, great day to watch some bike racing. And, you know, hopefully we gave them a good show. But this is the back stride of the course and brand new pavement this year, which made this, made this race even faster. It was... It was, it was a good good decision to repave this road because it was super bumpy last year. But overall, really fun. And, you know, just a good time. I was feeling really, really good in this race, actually. You can just, basically by my heart rate, it was like under 160 for most of the race. And my threshold's like 165, which is what I can hold for about an hour. So... When I'm under 160, I'm at 155 right now. Like, I'm chilling basically. I can hold this for multiple hours. So, here we are on going into the last turn in a few moments. And this, this turn was probably one of the more tricky ones, I'd say. If you're in the front, you can really hold your speed through it well. But in the back, you can see I'm scrubbing off a ton of speed, just about 20 miles per hour. And then you have this false flat uphill. So you really have to put in a pretty large effort to get back up to speed to get up this hill and stay on the wheel. So that can be a little bit tricky. So it's important to stay in the front, which you're gonna see was kind of the downfall of, of my race. Um, so here we go. We're about halfway through the race right now. And, you know, guys are starting, starting to hurt a little bit. That was actually my teammate on the left there. And I'm try trying to, you know, motivate him to keep going. But that being said, this guy in front of me also, he was struggling a little bit. And I'm trying to, I'm like, hold the wheel, hold the wheel. You know, because there's a headwind in this section. So I don't really want to do, I don't really want to pull. But... He was, he was hurting a little bit, so I had to put in, you know, decent effort. But again, going into this turn up ahead, I'm aware that they're going to slow down a lot. So even if I'm not directly on the wheel going into this turn, I'll still be able to hold my speed and then be able to catch up pretty easily. But luckily, I was able to make it back on. And as you're going to see, they're, they're completely strung out right now in a single line, which means you're going really, really fast. No, nobody wants to be in the wind. So you're gonna have one guy going really fast and everyone's just slotting behind him so they don't have to do as much work. Um, but again, now they, they are going across the road so they're slowing down a little bit going into turn one of this course. This, this course kinda uh, was a crash fest this year, I'd say. Um, so this one up, coming up ahead kind of was the end of my race. So I'm in the back right now and we're going into eight laps to go. So I'm like, all right, I have plenty of time. I can start moving up now. Like I said, I was feeling really good, um, this whole race. So, and I was waiting until towards the end to make my move up to the front and, you know, do well in the end. But we had this, we had this bad crash which split the field. Um, I'm not going to show too much of this footage, but some guy cut his face and we had to neutralize the race for about 10 to 15 minutes. So when they restarted us, we only had about four to go. Um, and 
if if you've ever done a bike race, you know once once the guys get a little break and they're rested, then they're put back in with four to go. It's the race is on. You know it, it's fast for those entire four laps. You know no one no one's hurting from the previous previous you know half of the race. And also we had four or less laps, so this race only ended up being about thirty minutes long, which you know not super ideal for super fit athletes so here we're going i'm turning the volume up a little bit so you can hear this so this guy totally blew out his tires there's a crash right there and this is going in to one to go again wasn't able to make it up in those previous laps but now the field is completely split and you know that's that's when that happens, it's kind of the end of your race. There's not really any other options except to ride as hard as you can. But if you're in the back and you're caught behind a crash and there's no free laps left, it's kind of just, you know, ride it in, save it for tomorrow. Because as you, you'll see up ahead, there's, you know, big gaps opening up. And with one to go, no one's slowing down. They're not slowing down at all. So... That was the end of my race. And, you know, some might call that luck. Some might, but, you know, personally, I think I was just, you know, was riding too far back. And that's just the risk you take when you ride in the back of the field. You, you know, run the risk of people crashing and you being stuck behind it. And there's not really any other way to get around, get around that when that happens. So... That's, you know, I'm just, I'm just riding as far as I can. Basically you can see gaps are opening up still. So I go around one and then another one opens up. So at, at this point I'm like, okay, this is, this is basically over with. There's not really reason to risk going super hard to make up five spots when I'm already, you know, about, you know, 20th or so I think I finished 22nd in this race so is what it is but you know you, you always want to finish up as hard as you can just because it's good practice I guess <laughs> uh, in stage races where it's actually timed you actually will have a time cut so if you don't finish in a percentage of the time that the winner finishes you actually will get uh, disqualified from the race so it, it's just a method to keep you keep you invested in going hard basically you don't want anyone to sit up and pinpoint particular days to be super fresh on but this is a point based omnium and you can do whatever races you want you can pick and choose so there's not really any cut like that if you get pulled one day you can still go back the next day it's not it's not a, you know, a DQ time-based race like that. So each stage is basically its individual race. And then if you choose to do all of them and you do well, then you get points and you can win the overall. Um, but again, that being said, a lot of these guys do do all of the races. And I know this guy, he is pretty strong. He's always up there. His teammate, I think, finished third overall. So... You know, when you're in these long races, you don't really want to make enemies. This guy pulled me this whole last lap, and you can see that guy kind of sprinted around. Sure, I had the legs to out sprint this guy, but you know, you don't really want to make enemies. So just just let the guy finish one spot in front of you if he did the work, you know? Make him you know. You get what I mean. So hopefully you guys enjoyed this video. Uh, make sure you make sure you give it a thumbs up and subscribe if you have not done that already. But we'll see you on Sunday for stage nine. And then a week from today will be the last day of Intelligentsia Cup, which is stage 10. And that was the best finish I had. So you're not going to want to miss that one. So make sure you hit that subscribe button so you can be aware of when I post that video. 
Uh, again, thanks for watching and I'll see you on Sunday.